So, <clears throat> you know, the blower door helps us find the leaks if we know where to look, if it's easy. But sometimes it's not so easy to find out where the leak is, where the air is coming from. I mean, we can feel it at the wall here, but what's its path? You know, what's it traveling through? And so that's why we use what we call zonal pressure diagnostics, or testing, to find out and pinpoint where those leaks are so that we're not digging through six inches of whatever that was installed 60, 70, 100 years ago, you know, and trying to find small, tiny leaks where we could use another tool, another way to pinpoint and verify where that air is coming from. We can get there a lot quicker. We can save a little bit of time, save a little bit of money, you know. So let's talk about that a little bit. <clears throat> so why we perform zonal pressure diagnostics, it directs our work scope, okay? It pinpoints, it tells us where to go. Confirms that my thermal and pressure boundary are aligned. I have a complete air barrier. We can look across the, the attic and, yeah, it looks like we've got lots of insulation, but is the air barrier beneath it complete? And it's hard to see with all that junk in the way, okay? Or even with good insulation, it's hard to see unless you dig through it, you know? <clears throat> Help us find the big holes first. You know, we don't want to spend hours tracking down two CFM of leakage reduction, do we? We want to get in there and we want to knock out several hundred to a couple thousand, get in and get out. You know, that's the key. You know, get our numbers down quickly, fast. Verify that the work is finished. You know, test in and test out. Testing out is very important. Testing as you work is important. You know, we just sealed what we thought was a big hole. What did it do to my number? Sometimes the big holes that we see are really not that leaky because they're not connected to the inside of the house. They may be a gigantic shaft that goes right through the center of the house from the attic to the crawl. We do need to seal it for other issues such as health and safety and moisture and etc. But we may not have knocked off anything off the blower door number. So that's a good way to kind of verify that we're working in the right direction too. And you know basically to make sure that we're doing it cost effectively. You know, so we're not just sealing holes that, that don't do anything. And then health and safety and durability, you know, tracking down them holes that, that are connected to those spaces that we don't want to be breathing from, right? So, which would be like the crawl space, the attic, through a dirty wall connected to, I don't know, pick your poison, you know. But, so the key is that we're not really worried about negatives and positives, we're worried about Absolute numbers, zero to 50, okay? The negative and positive is simply gonna depend on where you put your hose on the manometer. So, there's just a sample house. There's no air barrier or thermal barrier drawn on this house. You know, where, where's it supposed to be, you know? It could be in a number of different locations. It could be here, you know, down. It could go up and over. It just depends on how this house is being used. And what we're trying to do is verify that where the insulation is located, that that actually is the tighter air barrier. Is that, is that where we need to be fixing or do we need to maybe move the insulation to another location, you know, where, the, where the, technically the air barrier actually is, you know. So sometimes our eyes can fool us. That's why we like to use this pressure diagnostics to kind of verify that, you know, this really is what's happening here. This is what's supposed to be going on here, you know. Um, and here's a, you know, the test going into the attic. So what number should we see here? 50 if it's tight, right? And don't worry about it being negative or positive. It just depends on where you put that hose. Okay, here's a sample of doing a test to the attic. <clears throat> Basements are the inside or outside. It depends on what? Are we conditioning it directly? You know, not indirectly, not like, well, we got some boxes down there and somebody thought, well, I'm just going to chop a hole here in the side of the duct, you know. No, that's kind of like an afterthought. Um, you know, we don't really need to be conditioning junk. If there's like a living space down there, you know, couch, futon, whatever, somebody's living there, then, then maybe we need to do that. <clears throat> if the system's sized appropriately and it's, you know, accounted for that space, yes. But if it's supposed to be inside, what should be my zonal pressure across this plane right here? Zero, right? Right, because that's inside. 
In this case, on the right, 50, yep. Okay, so <clears throat> this could be a garage, it could be a basement. This is how we would do the zonal pressure test across this door. We would just slide the hose underneath, you know, or open a door, throw the hose in there, and then close it over top of the, the hose. Uh, you don't want to pinch the hose, so if the door closes really tight and you don't have that little gap at the bottom like you see here, then you may want to use like a little metal tube. You know, sometimes you have like a, a two inch gap, you know, underneath the door or something. Uh, what I like to do is maybe take like an old towel or something and just kind of try to close off as much of that space as possible. It's still not going to be really accurate unless you tape every part of that, but it's going to give you a good estimate right. of Right, yeah, you're trying to, like I said, get the hose in there. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, in real world, that's the way it's operating right now. Right. But you know that that's one of the leaks right. because that's the gap. And you know you're probably going to, you know, maybe weather strip that or whatever or seal it. But, but you okay, let's see how much difference you could temper sometimes we'll use like this duck mask you know it's like this temporary tape or uh oh they got all kinds of different brands of that but you can just temporarily i've even just taped the whole door jam or whatever just to kind of see what happens but yeah you want to try to get the probe in there sometimes it'll kind of curl around on you and come back you know if you're not careful but and, and, and that's a good point that, that you brought up because um sometimes has anybody run across the door that's perfectly weather stripped but the door is just kind of like crooked or warped you know? Yeah. I mean, so sometimes you, you can do a zonal to like, say, the garage or the basement and, you know, be like, wow, that basement or that garage is really connected to the interior space. But you could just push on the door and just realign it to the weather stripping and you watch that zonal number go up. It's like, oh, well, here's most of my problem right here. That, so that kind of verifies that it's mostly the door. But you can also do that and take the door out of the equation and say, okay, how much more beyond the door do we have, you know, as far as the problem, you know, how many more holes are we going to be looking for? How much of a hole are we looking for? You know, so um, that's a good point. You could just kind of take the door out of the equation because we see that that's a known hole and then see, well, what's beyond that? So, um, so when we're testing inside the envelope, we should see zero. If this is a complete thermal and pressure boundary, if there's no holes in the top plate, somebody has sealed, you know, where the drywall meets the, the uh, top framing member, um, or, you know, the electrical penetrations, the plumbing penetrations, they've been sealed, then we should see, you know, zero or close to that. You know, when you get below five or something, you know, you're getting pretty close. You're, you're doing pretty good. You don't really want to be <clears throat> focusing a lot of your attention on really small numbers. You want to be looking for the larger numbers, okay, initially anyways. So what if we get 25 in this wall? It's, it's equal to the inside and the outside, you know. Maybe it looks like that at the top, okay? So what's this hole for? <laughs> it's, well, a it's, a, it's a wire, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, it's supposedly electrical, but I don't know too many electricians that use a two-inch hole saw for a half-inch wire. Well, there's a couple. But, <laughs> but probably is because the plumber decided, oops, I drilled in the wrong spot. He moved it over, and the electrician came back and said, hey, free hole, and ran his wire. You know, he's like, that's one less hole I got to drill, uh, you know, gain an extra 10 cents. So what if we see something like this? What, what do you think you're going to expect at the top? Or what do you think you might see? Will it be a bigger hole or smaller hole? Bigger. bigger? Yeah. Maybe something like that. Maybe like a marriage wall, you know, on a multifamily uh, dwelling, you know, where you got two units button up against each other and the top is just completely missing or a balloon frame wall you know does everybody know what a balloon frame wall is yeah basically a wall with no top plate okay so here we are testing in a kitchen soffit or fur down or, or a bulkhead, bulkhead or, or wherever you're from yeah <laughs> it might be something else but it's basically over the kitchen cabinet right yep over the kitchen cabinet you got another picture for so that. what what yeah. uh what should we get here when we do a zonal test of this space? What do we want to see? Zero or 50? Zero? 50? 25? <laughs> okay. Uh, 45 and a half? <laughs> uh, we should see zero. Because close to zero. Yeah, it's not going to be yeah. perfectly or, zero, but yeah. closer well, to zero. Right? Yeah, close to zero is possible. If we just think of two numbers, you know. But yeah, 
So because we want that pressure plane, the air barrier, to be up here, not down here. You know? So here's a, a drawing example of that. Uh, if this is basically not sealed right here, what's it connected to? It's connected to the outside. It's connected to the wall cavity you know, beneath it. You see this right here? So this is basically connected to this interior wall. Has anybody heard a homeowner complain that my dishes are cold? You know? Yeah, actually, a friend of mine just bought a house, and his wife's like, come here, come here. You know, feel my plates. I'm like, yeah, frosted mug. <laughs> you know, not good. Not good. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe it's okay. But really should be in the refrigerator or freezer, not in the cabinet. So we want to we seal it right here. We want to take that bulkhead out of the equation so that the outdoor air goes over top here and not down inside of here against the drywall, against my kitchen cabinets. You know, we don't want that to be the air barrier. Right. Okay. But what I'd say about that is because that's open to the attic and then it's open to the wall, anything that's open or connected to that wall is now also what? Open to the attic. You know, it's like outdoors. So if we want to try to pull, you know, you had that picture early on, indirect leakage, right? It's coming in one place. You might be coming in the attic down the wall over there, but there's an outlet on the wall or whatever. You know, it's com you feel it coming out there. But it's coming in the top of the wall. It might be coming underneath the house. But if I just seal around the door jam or, or start caulking all the baseboard, is that going to fix it? All we're going to do is chase the leak. If we're going to caulk it here, it's going to do what? Probably come out somewhere else. So what we want to do is... A, seal it where it comes in and like what you were the first class was saying is you want to seal at the top you know first you know and then probably the bottom you know but so you want to attack it where the air is coming in and then and then the hole in the middle does is, is there as much air coming out of it then because you sealed it at the top you 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 fixed that entry point so to speak and that's what you're doing here there are different ways to do this but this is probably the the most common way to fix it. I mean, you could, you could leave that space outside and air seal the top of that, that wall and then fill that full of insulation. But the most of, you want your, like you said, your air barrier, your insulation to be where? In the same place, right? Now, all this space, instead of being the 32 that we had, what should that space be a lot closer to now? Zero. And how about those dishes in the silverware? They should be a lot warmer, right? And your frosty mug? No more frosty know. mugs. <laughs> so is it a good idea to seal here? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> another example of that would be like a house that has two different ceiling heights. You know, basically a short knee wall, you know, in the attic. You know, one ceiling height is maybe eight foot, and you go into the next room, and it's like, hey, the ceiling in here is nine foot. Oh, I need to check something in the attic. You need to make sure that this is sealed right here because otherwise this is just a giant bypass and uh, I found one of these in a house actually and we had the blower to run and I was looking at the wall with a thermal camera and the entire wall was blue. I mean the top to bottom and I was like wow. Usually you see like some blue streaks you know in the winter time when it's cold outside but the entire wall was blue. I was like this is just crazy. And then I got to looking at the two ceilings, and I was like, oh, yeah, they're two different heights. And we go up in the attic, and this is just, you know, the insulation goes right to here, and it stops. Because this is the thermal boundary. But the pressure boundary is incomplete because it stops there, too. You know, there's a big hole in it. So we had to seal right here all the way across, put blocking in at the top of that wall. Basically put in a top plate at the 8-foot level. You know, and then you have another wall from the eight right. foot to and nine foot. Sometimes level. it's a good idea to put like a uh, foam board or something mm -hmm. on the back of those rigid board uh, here knee walls there. Yep. And sometimes there's no insulation there at yep. all. So you treat, know, it, treat it. Treat it like huge. a knee wall. Yeah. Yeah. Treat it just like a knee wall. So here's an example of what that would look like. You know, we got two different ceiling heights here, <clears throat> and look, you just got gigantic bypasses. You know, it's like it's like having a balloon frame wall right in the center of your house. You know. <clears throat> there we go. You can see the arrows, the heat coming out the top. So let's talk about front porches. We were, we were talking about some basic zonal diagnostics. You know, I'm standing inside condition space. I'm testing in an attic. I'm supposed to get what? 50. 
I'm inside, I'm testing an interior wall. What's the number I'm looking for? Zero. I go outside, I'm standing on the front porch. I'm outside and I test into a, uh, this porch cavity right here. What number am I looking for? <laughs> he's, yeah, about, he's, being, he's being tricky with you guys. Think about where he, you're standing. Yeah, he's being tricky. He's standing outside the building. Outside the building. I'm outside. I'm on the front porch. There's the front door right here. Grandma, hey, I'm outside. Okay. And he put the hose into that porch. The hose into the porch. Yeah, it should be close to zero because it's attic yeah. and the porch ceiling with reference to where in that case? Yeah. Outside. All right. So, uh, so a takeaway would be, think of it like this. Whatever you're testing, whatever zone you're testing, do you want that zone connected to where you're standing or do you want it away from where you're standing? If I'm on the front porch, do I want that roof space to be outside or inside? Outside. So do I want it connected to me or away from me? And if I want it connected to me, what number should I see? Zero. Zero. If I'm standing inside and I run a hose to that porch, what do I want to see? 50 because I want away from me. So think of it like that, you know, what am I testing? Do I want that space to be connected to me or do I want it to be away from me? Basically a, a nice solid barrier is a good way to think about zonals. Because sometimes it's easier to test this space here from the outside versus trying to run a hose through a window and into the porch and then go back inside and read your manometer. You just take the manometer with you, drill a little hole, stick a hose in there. Okay, you know, the blow door's running. You know, I got zero, good. That means that blow door's not pulling on that space. That's good. There's, there's no connection there, you see. So that's why if you think of it about is that space connected to me or is it away from me? Then you can take the manometer and move anywhere you want to. You can, you can go in the garage and test from the garage to the house. You can reverse it if it's easier or whatever. You don't have to always be in the same spot. Okay? So you're always zero? You're always zero. You're basically, yeah, you're always zero. Yeah. That's a good way to think about it. I'm a big zero. Thanks, man. Thanks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So I think, the zero. I think okay. we're out of time. All right, let's stop there. For more information about the New River Center for Energy Research and Training, please visit us at nrcert.org. Or you can call the NRCERT office at 540-260-9081. The New River Center for Energy Research and Training. Conserving energy today for a greener tomorrow.